So, as Kling AI created the web versions of this AI video generator, it became more convenient to create videos. It allows you to have faster access to all the file management tools and better navigation using a mouse and click compared to their mobile apps. I have made short video clips doing horror stories. Now that the story is created in the Kling AI web version, as you can see, there are a lot of video scenes here. I did some trial and error. Although I created the image for each scene, some of them did not work well. So you also have to include prompts to make it a better way to do the video animations here. For example, I have tried a few times already using different prompts because what they can do is similar. Like Luma AI, you can do the image right here using this icon. And in Kling AI, you can also upload your image as the starting point for your AI videos. They also have key points for the beginning and ending in Kling AI as well. You can enable this button. You have two upload image areas where you can set the key points for the starting and ending of the video clip. But this time, I'm just using the image and testing some text prompts. It's not necessary to use text prompts, but it's better to get more descriptions of how the camera moves or how the characters in the videos will react during that short period of time. Of course, you can extend the length of the videos by default, it's five seconds. You can extend that without any prompting, or you can extend the video with another five seconds using text prompts. For example, after the first five seconds, when I extend it by another five seconds in this text prompt area, you can describe what will happen in the next new five seconds of this video clip. This includes the starting and ending key points that I just mentioned. That is one example here. Let me check. Here is another example that I used for the key points for the starting and ending of the frames. So upload two images here. As you can see, this image was generated in Comfy UI using my workflow that I did for text to image, just with the help of text prompting, some face ID and control net to create the scenery and the actions or characters as I wanted. In this example, I specified that the character starts writing at a computer desk and then it transitions to another view of this character studying at the desk. I like this way because it feels like a time lapse, showing how fast the character is studying during the daytime and then changing eventually to nighttime in this scene. That's something we can use. The starting key point and the end point represent how you want your AI movie's motions to be. This is basically it for the AI video generator. It's a pretty easy UI and self-explanatory. Even in Luma AI, as I demonstrated before, it's quite easy. Even Luma AI has a simpler interface. You don't need to adjust any settings or type anything. All you need is a text prompt to control the camera angles or the characters in the AI videos. There's also an image to video feature in this icon. There are starting and ending key points that you can set as well. Right now, I'm not going to try Luma AI because I am really looking forward to Runway ML Gen 3 with image to video enabled. Once that feature is enabled in Runway ML, I will definitely subscribe to that plan and try it out. Currently, I'm just using Kling AI for these short video and movie frames to demonstrate how we can make AI movies and AI short stories. Kling AI is pretty good, doing realism styles and some motions very well compared to other AI video generators. So, I will just use that at this moment for any AI video generation. Let's try to see how we get started creating scenes in our stories. First of all, we will create our character's face, right? For me, I like to keep it simple. I don't like to make a big, giant workflow for just one task, especially generating an image. I don't think we need a complicated workflow. I just do what is needed, and that is fine for me. I have a very easy way to create a character and I combine three different prompts here. The first one is the photo style. I go for realism styles, beautiful images, etc. The second one is a text prompt for the character style. Once you use ChatGPT or any large language model to create your stories, you also want to create the character descriptions. Ask ChatGPT to create descriptions for the characters. For example, here I have the age, body shape, height of the characters, and also the hairstyle, etc. What types of bodies do the characters have? Lastly, what kind of outfits do the characters usually wear? I randomly put a few styles for the characters' outfits and generate different character images here. Once I have that, it will be pretty much like this one where I create the characters. I have four characters in this story. Each of them has their faces, 
it's like a portrait image style of the characters with different clothing colors. But as you can see, the clothing styles remain the same. It is a very sporty outfit for this character. The outfit style is also very sporty because this character likes to go outdoors, ride bikes, etc. So it will pop up these styles for this character. The main character here is a very normal girl who doesn't have any specialties or exciting things happening in her life in these stories. So even the outfit style is kept simple for her with very minimal styles and nothing special on her face either. But as you can see, the generation of the first step using the comfy UI workflow is able to generate consistent faces. Although there are some slight changes, we can just pick one of those for the character's profile picture or the close-up shot for face recognition. I usually choose one like this because it's a close-up shot and a pretty good portrait image for a character like this one. I am generating this character's face using this very simple workflow. It basically is the text-to-image workflow, but I have made it more simplified with better text prompts to identify the photo styles, character styles, and the outfit of the characters. But I will keep the image as a portrait style so it will be easier for later on. We can use that for face enhancement, face swapping for our AI movie scenery. The next step is building a face model in the reactor face custom nodes. We have a function called save face model for the reactor. In this step, I load an image from a directory which I showed previously. We have folders for our AI images of the characters. All these images are in the same dimensions as we generated in workflow one. In this workflow, we are building the face models for these characters. The easiest way is to load a folder. You don't have to load specific files from this folder path. Just the directory of this folder is good enough. And the next step is rename the face model's name. So for me, basically I will just using the character's name as the face model's name. That is the easiest way to do. And after that, it will show the output of the characters in here. So for example, I have this character Anderson. So make sure these folders are also for that character as well. Yep, we have this folder for this character's name correctly. And first it will build the phase model in Reactor. And also we have load all the, load all the AI image that I generate previously here. So it shows, yeah, the results of what I did in, in the first workflow here, the text to image workflow that I did. It's pretty accurate to creating such character with, you know, pretty close consistent face for all this image result. Because when I use chat, GDP, or clock three, basically they have created a story first. And what I did is I can show you guys in the word documents. Okay, so here's the word documents. So briefly, I will ask the AI to create each acknowledged summaries. And then for the each act, I have narrative speech for each character and narrations what it do at that moment of the scene. And lastly, I will create a very detailed describe how the character looks. The AI are generating each characters and you know, the styles age, the tall, the height of the characters as well, and the body build type as well. And that is all included for my first step. One workflow, which is the text to image to create characters. So that's why it will be very consistent in the same characters in the image. So I'm able to using this list of images and creating a face models in reactor node. And after creating the face models for the characters, having all the character AI image generate and create those face models, you will start creating scenes for your AI videos. So this is previously, I have showed this workflow in my previous videos to using the large language model Llama 3 to generate scenery for the AI image. And this is something that I modified in here because I have, you know, just doing text prompt manually sometimes is even faster and more controllable for me. So I have put a reroute node here. So if you want to use text prompt typing manually, you can connect this dot putting the strength output in here. Or if you want the large language model to do the text prompting for you, you will connect this one here and the strength output will replace our manual text prompting output. And after that, you can come to here and enable the large language model to do the work and we can close. We can disable the text prompting here. So in this way, we disable the text prompting groups and enable the large language models group. It will doing the text prompting work in here. 
So basically this is not very complicated steps, and after all the other steps in this workflow are going to be just image generations. I have put a face ID here if you need that. You have to enable this one to make your face ID work for the characters. And sometimes I use the control net here. I'm using the SDXL checkpoint models. So that will be better and easier to use. The SDXL control net, SDXL control net models. This is the one that we have talked about in previous videos. All in one SDXL control net models. So you can switch over the preprocessors and it will do. It works by itself. In this examples, I'm using their line art, realistic line art, and if you want like open poles or depth map, you can do that as well. Just change this preprocessors and you are done for making the control net in different type of control net. So that is basically all the configurations for this AI image workflow and the sampling. And, and you know, it's very standard procedure in image generations and the refinder, the detail refinder. I am disabled at this moment because I have seed. The high res fix can do pretty well for my image at this moment, so it will be disabled at here. But you can use that for fixing hand face and even the whole person as well in your detail refinder. And lastly, I am using the face swap to, um, you know, do the character face in here. That's what we have did in the step two, which is the building the face model in reactor. So in here, we can select whoever the character is and we are ready to use that anytime. And using face model is more, I can see it's more accurate for doing the character face swap for our image. And lastly, is saving the image in a folder using the save image extended custom notes. This one are able to help us getting better file naming conventions that we have time and date, and also the sampler's name, CFG steps, etc. And then put that into a subfolder in the output subfolder, then we can retrieve that in there that is more manageable. So this is a basic workflow for text to image using large language models. Mentioned workflows in the previous steps, available for freebies download, link provided in the description. More additional contents and workflows available for Patreon supporters. And, and I have the other two in the step four, which is creating scenes. As you can see the creating scenes with text prompt. This is what we have just showed. And we have the other two, which is handling one character and the other ones handling two character in the scene. So for this one is the same concept like what I did in the animated workflow. And actually this is based on the animate diff V2V workflow that I have previously and make some modifications and change that for image generation. This is how I create these short story videos. I can't say this is a movie or frame, but it's something similar to that. A short story that I can continue creating. As you can see in my documents that I generated in ChatGPT, I also added some myself. I have Act 1, Act 2, and even up to Act 10 for this story and similar projects. You can easily do this yourself using workflows in Stable Diffusion and any AI video generator. Personally, I'm using Kling AI, but you can use Luma AI if you prefer. I have Luma AI as well, so I can use both if needed. For voice and sound effects, I'm using Eleven Labs and Artlist IO. You guys can check them out if you need high quality sound or any stock videos for your reference posts in your workflow. They are very good for that. So yeah, check it out guys. Create any stories using AI large language models to help you create stories. Or if you are a good writer, you can write stories yourself. That is no problem. Even better, you can make your own movies, your own TV shows, your own short stories, or a series of short stories without being limited by traditional publishing companies. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.